Whether you believe it or not, one of the best ways to market your product or service is not through social media, it's not through ads, it's through email. Email allows you to send a specific offer to a specific person in a very personal environment. One of the best ways to collect emails is through an opt-in page. The premise of an opt-in page is simple. You are offering something that's really valuable for free in exchange for someone's email. This creates a very warm lead because they are interested in your contents, therefore they're likely interested in buying something from you. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to create a no-code opt-in page inside of Glide Pages. It looks like this. This one offers a holiday baking guide where you can get five irresistible recipes that are sure to impress everyone this year. All the user has to do is enter in their name and email, and then in return, you give them the holiday baking guide on a thank you page. If you stick around to the end of the video, I'll share with you where you can actually copy this exact template. All you have to do is plug in your own download, your own image, your own messaging, and then you can start using this opt-in page for your product or service. So let's go ahead and get to building in this opt-in page inside of Glide Pages. I'm gonna start from a new project and we'll call it opt-in page. This is gonna be a Glide page. I'm gonna start from a blank template and I'm just gonna be using Glide tables for this project to store all of my data. Let's start off with the data itself. We're gonna rename this to form. And forgive me, but we're about to get into the weeds a little bit. Right now, this is just a regular text field. The issue with having just a regular text field is if you come to this website and enter in your name at the same time I'm coming into the website and entering in my name, then we'll be overriding each other's data here. So Glide has a really nice way of handling this and it's called column is user specific. So each user who comes to the website is going to be adding in their own name. So I'm gonna add a new user specific name column here. And I'm gonna do the same thing for email. So I'm gonna pick email and then this is gonna be email, but this one is going to be user specific. Now that I have user specific name and email, I don't need these other four fields. I'm gonna go ahead and delete those. So this is all we need to get started. It's just a table with a name and email, but it's user specific. That is important. So let's go ahead and, and start building this page. Let's go into settings and kind of set things up a little bit. If we go to, let's say appearance, let's go ahead and add that uh, red color that I was using in the original opt-in page. So come here, paste that in. There's that. The, we're gonna use top navigation, but I want to use the accent color for app info, we're going to remove the name opt-in page. I'm going to go ahead and upload a logo and that's going to um, add that right there. That's what it is, logo. So now we have a logo there. And then I also want to update this icon. This shows up in the browser. So I'm going to upload that icon here. And I created both of these inside of Canva. I'll have a link to Canva down in the description. All right, so now that that is done, we need to remove the profile sign-in because this is going to be a public facing page. So no sign in is required. So we have that taken care of. And I think everything else is good to go. We'll go ahead and make sure that I'm viewing the project as anyone. So now we have this top nav bar done. Let's go ahead and add in that picture. And the picture is going to be a component on this page. And right now I can't add anything. And that's probably because the data, there's no data source. Let me go ahead and point this to form and now I can add a container. All right, let's go ahead and set the background image of the container. And I used unsplash.com to grab a picture. Unsplash is a royalty-free site where you can grab pictures. This is the one specifically that I used. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this image address and I can paste this over into Glide. And that's gonna pull that image in here. Now it's really short now because there's nothing actually inside of this container. And so now we actually need to start adding in some of these components. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this text here. And I'm gonna put this inside of a rich text component inside of the container. So for this top line, we're gonna make the heading a number one heading so it's nice and big. And let me grab that other text as well. So this is just some extra or additional text to convince the user to that they want this download and what this download is gonna be about. I'm gonna add in asterisks there just to bold up this line and that should be good to go. If we look at the example below, we have name and email and then a button. So let's go ahead and add those. So the name is going to be a text entry and then we also want an email entry and then finally a button. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab a button and put all of that in there. 
This is still looking really wide. So let me go over to settings. I just want to make sure it looks like the original. So I think we need a narrow width. Yeah, that looks more like what we have here. We have name and email and then our buttons. Our button says, give me the holiday baking guide. So let me type that in to the button. And this is going to be on the actual action itself. Give me the holiday baking guide. All right. And then I also added in some placeholder text here. We go to name placeholder. So enter your name and same for email. So enter your email. And then now we need to do something on this button. But before we do that, I want to make sure that this fills up the screen. Let me go ahead and add in some spacers or what they're called in Glide as a separator. I'm going to add this the very top. And let's add in a bunch of large ones. So I'll do a few larges and then do a few larges at the bottom. Now we get into the fun piece or one of the fun pieces, and that is doing stuff on this button. And we're actually going to be using a custom action for this. Regular actions is like show notification or open link, but we're going to create a new action so that we can do a bunch of things at the same time. I'm going to name this action opt-in. And whenever this action triggers, I want to check to see if name is not empty and if email is not empty. So if name is not empty and email is not empty, then we want to proceed, but else, so meaning one of those is empty, then we want to show a notification and we'll say failure, please complete the form. So if they don't add their name or email, they'll get this notification. But if they do, then something else is going to happen. So for now, let's go ahead and just clear the form. So we're going to do set columns of this row, clear the name, clear the value. And then let's go ahead and show a notification as well. We'll say, just say, thanks for opting in. So we have those two. So let's go ahead and test this out. So if I don't enter in anything, I get the message, please com complete the form. If I enter in a name, please complete the form. And then if I enter in an email, but not the name, please complete the form. And now if I enter in a name and email, then I get thanks and name and email are cleared out. So two things. One, we need to actually add a place to store this long-term. And then two, we need to go to a thank you page to actually download the guide that they are opting in for. So first, let's go ahead and add a new table to store the long-term submissions. So this is everybody who's actually opted in. So we'll call this form submissions. And we're just gonna need a name and email. So I'm gonna name this, call this email. And I didn't do this in the original template, but maybe just for fun, let's keep a date here for when they opted in. All right, so this is where we're going to store that. And then the next thing we need is a thank you page. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this opt-in page because we're going to be using a lot of the same stuff. The second page, let's go ahead and name it thank you, give it a tag. And we don't want to show this in the menu because we, we only want people to go to this page when we direct them to it. We don't want them to access this page on their own. So we're not going to show that in the menu. So on the thank you page, if we look back at that, this just says, thank you. And then here is the holiday baking guide and then gives them that download. So for this, we can remove the text and email entry. We'll update the rich text to use the new text. So we'll bold that top line or rather make that top line a heading and then bold the second line. And then for this button here, we want this to say, open the holiday baking guide and then push it to the left. So for alignment, I'm going to push to start. And then for the text, we'll say open the holiday baking guide. And then for the action, we're actually just going to open a link, which is where they will grab the document. This is going to be a custom link. And for this, I just uploaded like a sample file. And so I'm just going to put that link in there for now. This is just like a dummy placeholder file. And it looks like we're not filling up the screen here. So let me go ahead and add in some more separators to make sure that fills up the screen. All right, so now we have this thank you page. And when we click on this button, it opens up the document that they are downloading. And so now we need to update on the opt-in page what it, whenever they actually opt in. So let's go ahead and update that action. Edit action. And so here, before we clear out their name and email, it's important to do it before, we want to add a row to store their name and email in the form submissions table. So I'll go to form submissions in name. I'm going to put their name that they entered in email. We'll put the email that they entered. And then in date, we're going to put the current date and time so that we know when they actually opted in. 
So we add their name and email to form submissions. We clear out the name and email on the opt-in page. We show a success notification. Then we're going to go to the thank you tab or page. So thanks page. So that should all be squared away. So I think this all should work. Let's go ahead and publish it and test it out. I'm going to paste that link into a new browser tab. Let's go ahead and enter in my name. I didn't enter in an email, so it shows me an error. Let's do Darren at test.com. So now my name and email is complete. Let's click the button. It says, thank you. Here's your holiday baking guide. Now we can open the holiday baking guide. There it is. Let's go back to the table itself. Let's go to form submissions. And you can see right here that this is what I, what I just entered. So Darren at test.com. And here is the date and time for that. So this, my friends, is how to create the opt-in page inside of Glide Pages. So as promised, I wanted to give this opt-in page template to you for free. All you have to do is go to the link at the top of the description. On this page, you can preview this project inside of Glide if you just want to take a look behind the scenes. But you can also copy this template to your own Glide account. And that's where you can actually start editing it and making it your own and using it all completely for free. If you liked this video, you'll probably like this video. In this video, I show you how to create a landing page inside of Glide Pages. The purpose of a landing page is to convince somebody that they need your product or service. It's just a different piece in your whole marketing strategy. So you have your opt-in page to collect emails, but your landing page is there to convince people to use your product or service. So go ahead and watch that video if you're trying to market your product or service and create a landing page inside of Glide Pages. Thanks so much for watching this video and happy coding.